yeah, I quit Swift. And sometimes it's okay to quit. I'm just going to let you guys know you guys are in the same position I am. You've actually been working on this and it's just not been working out for you or you have room beyond it or you're just in a position now that you want to do something different. It's okay, okay to quit, guys. I'm going to give you three reasons why I quit and um, I want you guys to make sure you're in the same boat so that you do not get caught in a position so that you, you're you not happy or you're not working on a programming language that you want to work with. So let me explain. Okay, guys, number one, it's not like uh, Swift is a bad programming language. It's just that one of those things that were at least the projects in the company I was working for, it didn't have a large footprint as far as just use cases. Um, once I worked there, it's just you got a small group of people who is using Android or uh, iOS devices who want to access the company data depending on what they want to do. And responsive apps actually did that for us, guys. A lot of responsive apps, um, you would be shocked. Um, a lot of web portals, a lot of templates, a lot of uh, web browsers have really got that nailed down to where depending on what type of device you want it actually displays just fine using a web page and that alone took a lot of the use cases of swift that we needed um, and actually made it so that we can use other web apps to facilitate that code because at the end of the day guys you want to reduce the amount of programming languages you use as much as possible in your environment not to say that you have to just only use one but you want to make sure as many of your primary um, production level application use the same programming language and if you have exceptions there's a really distinct reason why you're doing that and we want to keep it to that point so swift is one of those things to where it always on outside looking in depending on what company you're working for if you if you're using a really ios centric company then yeah it may be your main program language but a lot of enterprise level stuff if you get in an oracle environment sap anything like that they got other solutions in place that's going to reduce the amount of code you have to write in Swift. So if you're trying to go all in on that, it really come down to the company that you want to work for, guys. And what are they doing? And yeah, they say this in a job title. Hey, we need a Swift programmer. But what percentage of Swift that you're going to be using? That's the key. And it's kind of hard to know based off of a uh, job or a job posting that's why when you get in an interview you got to ask yourself or you got to ask the interviewer hey is this the only platform you guys use or do you got other platforms that you support uh, what i find is consulting companies you tend to see some boutiques with um, consulting companies but once you start getting into general business and technology companies that's when you start to see other programming language kind of get above that but again it's not that swift is not relevant is not important it's just come down to the use cases for that particular client guys and that's what i want you guys to focus on do me a favor guys give me an example of when you quit in the comment section when the last time you quit what do you do to move forward did you even move forward are you lost or are you just in a position just to need advice so you just want to feel like you're not the only one out on an island by yourself let's go ahead and have a discussion in the comment section so that we can kind of get you guys on the right foot at least at the very minimum set expectations appropriately the number two reason I quit I, uh, Swift programming is because the iOS platform is maturing. As a platform mature, you have less and less changes. Those changes get less and less impactful. And then it starts to just turn to uh, service pack security, just a lot of the operating system stuff, not necessarily dealing with the application. And when doing this, the actual workload reduced for the actual developers. This happens with certain clients, guys, and um, it's going to happen to you. It depends on what company you're working for. And you got to be aware of this so that you can um, make sure you roadmap so that you can always have additional projects to provide value. Because I always tell you guys, you know, you got two types of software development problems. You usually got the stuff that keeps the lights on, they're running the current running the current um, uh, platforms and then you got the stuff that really moves the needle for a company give them a competitive advantage in the market automate some things and really uh, free up some resources so that they can allocate them uh, elsewhere in the company once you start to get into the maintenance stuff you're getting into the actual keeping the lights on 
that's part of what we have to do, but you don't want that to be the lion's share because you're putting yourself in a position where uh, AI, other technologies can come and automate that stuff and you'll be out of a job. So I don't want to put myself in a position so that I'm doing just routine uh, work that don't necessarily move the company forward and I can't really build premium um solution-based billing off of that guys and a lot of you guys may think rod i'm sorry i i would love that work just to come in every day know exactly what i want to do and just do that which is fine and you can actually get away with that for a long time but again like i was telling you guys that's what ai come in and actually get your jobs for that type of stuff right there and you see a lot of developers losing their job what they're not telling you is hey i used to come in and do the exact same thing every day update the exact same store procedures we had a a working schedule where we did stuff and it was the routine and over time hiring managers get smart Ver let's just say hey i got a swift developer over there i'm paying one hundred fifty thousand dollars for or i can invest in an ai that's going to cost me about thirty thousand dollars a year if that and then it don't take no days off and it, it just continue to do it automate it which one they're going to go with my point exactly you do not want to lose your job because you're doing routine stuff and again a lot of you guys may think you can get away with this your company's going to actually be like this forever which that's the case but companies get acquired companies go bankrupt companies go out of business the worst thing you want to do is actually go on your resume and only put routine stuff yeah i used to patch stuff on swift development on the ios side really didn't do impactful projects that's what i do how many people is going to hire you for that kind of stuff guys this is just not going to be the case so let's put us in a position so that we can be successful guys and we don't have a routine job and we are we have an impactful job that's helped the company move forward guys so if you haven't already, I got links below to my seven step guide guys. And I also got links to my 30 day developer course. If you already signed up for the free guide, that's going to help you guys put you guys in a position so that you can get the job and make sure that you are not replaced by AI or put you in the game so that you can get a job. So links below to all that. And um, I'll make sure you guys are taken care of. Number three, and the final thing is third party platforms, guys. You got third parties out there in their, their mission in life is to have low code solutions, meaning that um, as an iOS developer, they want to reduce the amount of uh, infrastructure uh, code you have to do. So they have platforms almost like a wrapper that you can submit to the uh, apples and the Googles and the app stores that will actually get you approved. Basically a basic CRUD app that looks at the application and pull data from the application or endpoint that you need. And then you can just customize from there. There's not a lot of stuff you have to do as a pure Swift developer. It's all taken care of in this third party platform. I personally think that's going to be the trend of the future only because you're going to have companies who want to be more efficient. They want to reduce the amount of programming languages they support and this put them in a position where they can scale. They can make changes rapidly without having a C sharp developer, a Swift developer, a front end developer, a database developer and much, much more. You want to have that um, that I would say full stack developer who can communicate with the third party platforms, make sure everything's good to go. And I think that's going to be the uh, trend, especially for small and mid sized companies. You want more of that full stack developer. Now, once you start to get to the enterprise level, that's always going to be niched down because of just the sheer size and the complexity of the infrastructure. But I'm mainly talking about the mid sized companies, the general businesses, people like that where they don't have a ton of IT resources. And IT is a cost center for them. So they want to make sure that footprint state as um, efficient and small as possible so the best way to prevent yourself from getting um, losing a job or um, working on program or having knowledge of programming language you don't use is to have that knowledge and again it's not that I just completely forgot about Swift programming it's just that it's just part of it's a smaller part of my software development arsenal and toolkit I'll just put it like that Will I see myself doing some Swift and um, work in the future? Probably so. But it's probably going to be through a third party low co uh, code solution and probably a contract or something like that. Me personally, we'll see. You never say never. 
but you got to make sure, you know, you got to do what the company needs and uh, making sure your clients um, so that you can give them the largest return on the investment as possible, guys. So I know I beat this topic down and um, I always tell you guys to make sure you're doing what's in the best interest for you and the company as far as solving problems. Because if you're just coding, 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 and you don't know what impact that code is having on the company, you are putting yourself in a really bad position to be replaced by technology, or you're not building a relationship or networking in a way where you're showcasing your value. Because a lot of times you may think you're doing a lot of good, valuable work, but it's just busy work, or it's work that people don't necessarily care anything about, which does that move the need at the end of the day? Probably not. But again, uh, we talk about that more in our seven step guide. Um, if you haven't already, links below to that. Also, that 30 day developer course. Go ahead and check that out, guys. Why we got good rates on that. Like, subscribe to the content. If you have additional questions, comment below. And um, I'll put links, I'll put the uh, links to the seven step guide here on the screen as well. Now, see you guys in the next video.